Hello, today I'm going to be going over TriHackMe's Fishing Emos 5 room. I'm very excited for this one because this is going to be the challenge room using all the knowledge that we have obtained from the previous four rooms. So let's go ahead and hop right into it, into task one. And I'm going to go ahead and start the machine. Task one, just another day as a SOC analyst. A sales executive at Greenholt PLC received an email that they didn't expect to receive from a customer. He claims that the customer never uses generic greetings such as good day and didn't expect any amount of money to be transferred to his account. The email also contains an attachment that he never requested. He forwarded the email to his SOC, Security Operations Center, Department for further investigation. We have to investigate the email sample to determine if it is legitimate. And it gives us the tip to open the email file with Thunderbird. And let's go ahead and open the split view. And I'm going to view it in full screen. That way we get a picture of all its majesty. Now let's go ahead and do the first question. What is the email's timestamp? So first, it looks like this is going to be the email headers. So I'm going to get the location of it. Copy. I'm going to open up a terminal. And I'm going to CD into that location that we just copied. And I'm going to open that file with Thunderbird. All right, it looks like it's opened up. So what is the email's timestamp? And if we look up here, we can see that this is exactly what we are looking for. For the timestamp, let's look at that format. It doesn't look like there's that comma and it doesn't look like there's that AM. So we have to get rid of those. And we probably have to put a zero there. Interesting. Let's try this. Yep, there we go. And who is the email from? Let's look at the from. It's from Mr. James Jackson. What is his email address? It's info at mutawamarine.com. So we'll copy that email address and put it in there. What email address will receive a reply to this email? So for this one, we're going to have to actually look at the message headers themselves. Normally, I would just copy this and put it into a website like MX Toolbox. However, this VM does not have internet access, and this is too large to copy and paste outside of the box. So we have to manually look through this and figure it out. And we're looking for the reply to. So we can do a control F, reply, yep, reply to Mr. James Jackson. So this is actually going to be the email address that it's replying to. It's info.mutawamarine.com instead of just, instead of just info at mutawamarine.com. It's info.mutawamarine.com at mail.com. So it's a little bit different. What is the originating IP? So for this one, you would normally look for the X originating IP. However, it says the answer is not the X originating IP and they actually put X's there. Um, you may be asking yourself, why isn't it the X originating IP? I'm not really sure why they made it so that it's not the X originating IP. It could be because the X originating IP can be faked it's not guaranteed to be accurate every single time. So sometimes you have to look at the other email header fields to determine whether it's a gym or not. In this case though, it's going to be this IP address. That's the correct one coming from hostwinsdns.com. So, yep, there we go. Who is the owner of the originating IP? So we're gonna take this IP address. One thing you could do is you could open up a terminal and do who is and then paste the IP address and that would find it. But again, this box doesn't have internet. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to do something a little bit different. We are going to have to do a who is lookup and lookup.ican.org is a good one that you can use. So let's grab that IP address and paste it in here. And if we scroll down, we can see that the registrant name is host wins LLC. And it says to not include the period in the answer. Alrighty, what is the SBF record for the return dash path domain? So first we have to find the return dash path. 
All right, so it's going to be info at mutawamarine.com. So we'll copy that. And it wants the SPF record. Again, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to use an outside source. And in this case, I'm going to use demarcian.com domain checker. And let's grab that domain again. Copy. And we're going to paste that in. Ah, of course, we're going to be using just the domain, not the info at. And here we get details on the DMARC SPF and DKIM. And it wants the SPF record. It looks like it wants the whole thing. So we are going to just copy the SPF record. And also wants the DMARC record. Easy enough. What is the name of the attachment? Let's go ahead and see. It is this long one here. I'm going to go ahead and save it because we will need to save it to analyze it in just a second here. So I'm going to save it to the desktop. This way I can just go to this properties, just copy that and paste. So I don't have to type that out manually. It wants to know what the SHA-256 hash of the file attachment is. Since we have already gone ahead and saved it to the desktop, what we can do is we can open up a new terminal and we are going to CD into the desktop, which is where the file is located now. And we are going to do, I believe it's SHA-256 sum and then the file name which we already have copied from the last question, and we will press enter. And this gives us the SHA-256 hash. Whoops, let's do copy. There we go. What is the attachment's file size? Don't forget to add KB to your answer. So for this one, you could think that you could just right click, go to properties, and here you see the size. However, you'd be incorrect on this because this is 0.3 and it wants a two digit answer over here, or two decimal, I should say. So what we are going to do is we are going to upload that SHA-256 hash that we just got to VirusTotal. We're gonna do search. We're gonna grab that hash again, paste it in, and right here is the file size. And then what is the actual file extension? Going back to a virus total, if we go to details, we can see that the file type right here is actually a RAR file type. And that's it. Not too hard of a challenge if you paid attention during the other rooms. I thoroughly enjoyed doing the phishing module. Please like if you liked it. And if you want to see more, please subscribe. Thank you and have a good one.